In this exercise, you select a family with three children. If M represents a male child and F a female child, the set of equally likely outcomes for the children's gender is given by the set here. Find the probability of selecting a family with 1. Exactly one male child. 2. Exactly two female children. 3. At least one male child. And 4. At least two female children. So for number one, the probability of selecting a family with exactly one male child can be computed by dividing the number of ways exactly one male child can occur divided by the total number of possibilities. Now looking at the outcomes, the set of equally likely outcomes, we will count the number of outcomes that has exactly one male child. So it is this outcome here, 1, and then this outcome here, so that's 2, and then this outcome here. So that gives us three ways of getting exactly one male child. Now divided by the possibilities, the total number of possibilities, and that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 8 possibilities. So the probability of Selecting a family with exactly one male child is 3 over 8. Next, we find the probability of selecting a family with exactly two female children. This can be computed by finding the number of ways exactly two female children can occur. We actually call that the favorable outcome. Divided by the total number of possibilities. So for the favorable outcomes, we will count the number of outcomes here with exactly two female children. So this would be this outcome here, and then another outcome, this would be the other outcome too, and then three. So therefore, the probability is equal to three over the total number of possibilities is equal to eight. Three over eight. So next, we want to find the probability of selecting a family with at least one male child. This can be computed by dividing the number of favorable outcomes, that is the number of ways at least one male child can occur, divided by the number of possibilities. Now when you say at least one male child, that means that it could either be one, two, or three male children in a family. So if you look at the set of equally likely outcomes for the children's gender, the only instance wherein this could not happen is when a family have all female children. So therefore, the number of ways that at least one male child in the family is equal to seven divided by eight, that's the total number of possible outcomes. Next, we want to find the probability of selecting a family with at least two female children. This is equal to finding the number of ways at least two female children can occur, divided by the total number of possible outcomes. Now looking at the set of equally likely outcomes for the children's gender, the number of ways that at least two female children can occur is when you have this outcome here, MFF, FMF, FFM, and FFF. That gives us four favorable outcomes. So therefore, the numerator is four. And then the denominator, the number of possible outcomes, is equal to 8. So this is equal to 1 half. Use the spinner shown to answer the following questions. Assume that it is equally probable that the pointer will land on any one of the 10 colored regions. If the pointer lands on a borderline, spin again. Find the probability that the pointer lands in a, number one, a red region, two, a yellow region, and three, a region that is red or blue. 
To get the probability of landing on a red region, count the number of favorable outcomes. That means the number of red regions. In this case, we have one, two, three. Three red regions. And divide that by the total possibilities. It could land on any of the colored regions here. We have 10 colored regions. So this is 10. Therefore, the probability of landing on a red region is 3 over 10. To get the probability of landing on a yellow region, we do the same thing. For the numerator, we count the number of favorable outcomes. So we count the number of yellow regions. The number of yellow regions here is equal to 2. We have 1, 2, divided by the total possible outcome, and that is equal to 10. The probability of landing on a yellow region is 2 over 10, which is equal to 1 fifth. Third, we want to find the probability of landing on a region that is red or blue. To solve that, we will count the number of regions that are either red or blue. So we have 1, 2, 3 reds, and then 2 blue regions. That gives us a total of 5 regions divided by the total possible outcomes, which is 10. The probability of landing either on a red or blue region is 5 over 10, which is also equal to 1 half. The table here shows the number of Americans who moved in a recent year, categorized by where they moved, and whether they were an owner or a renter. Use the data in the table expressed in millions to solve the following exercises. We will use the table here to find the following probabilities. Express the answer as a decimal rounded to the nearest hundredth. First, we want to find the probability that a randomly selected American who moved was a renter. This can be computed by finding the number of renters and divide that by the total number of Americans who moved. To do this, we will first find the totals for each columns here and rows. So the total number of renter here is 24.2 million. So we have 24.2 divided by the total number of Americans who moved and that is equal to 39 million. 24.2 divided by 39 is approximately equal to 0.62. Next, let's find the probability that a randomly selected American who moved was a person who moved within the same state. The probability here of the event E is just equal to 30.4 divided by the total number of possible outcomes. This is the total number of possible outcomes, and that is equal to 39.0. This is approximately equal to 0.78. Next, we want to compute for the probability that a randomly selected American who moved was a person who moved to a different country. So to find the probability, the event E here is the person who moved to a different country. So the favorable event would be the total number of people who moved to a different country. And in this case, that's 1.3 million. So this is 1.3 divided by the total number of Americans who moved. So it's 39. 1.3 divided by 39 is approximately equal to 0.0. Three. Next, we want to find the probability that a randomly selected American who moved was a renter who moved to a different state. So here the event is that a renter who moved to a different state. So we will be looking at a renter, so these are the renters, and it should move to a different state. So it is this number here, that's 4 0.5. It is 4.5 divided by the total number of possible outcomes, and that is 39. 4.5 divided by 39 is approximately equal to 0.12. Next, we want to find 
the probability that a randomly selected American who moved was an owner who moved to a different state. So to do that, we will look at the row for owners and then move to a different state. So it will be 2.8. An owner at the same time moved to a different state. So 2.8 divided by the total possible outcomes, which is 39 million. The probability is equal to 2.8 divided by 39, which is approximately equal to 0 0.07.